Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measure. Here we're going to look at an extension theorem by this individual here. And it's essentially saying that we there is a unique extension of a measure from a field to a sigma field. And let's just jump right in. Let mu and lambda be measures on a sigma field. And, and the sigma field is the minimum sigma field generated over F, which is a field. Uh, subsets of omega and the two measures agree for every set in the field so assume omega is sigma finite that means it can be broken up into pieces where each of the pieces is finite the measure is finite so uh, omega can be represented as this infant union where every a n is in the field and the measures of course they agree on or over the field and they're both finite and that's for all n then mu has a unique extension to a measure on the sigma field and mu is equal to lambda and so let's prove that so first of all we're going to fix an a n in the field so one of these a's that you know the in the infinite union that makes up omega we're going to take one of those and that's what this represents. So we're going to create another set, call it BN, which uh, is sort of a function of that AN. And it's, and it's this. It's all the sets B in the sigma field such that these two measures agree. So B intersect AN, you know, the mu of that is equal to lambda of B intersect AN. Now, our goal is we want to show that BN is a monotone class, and then I'll give reasons why, you know, in step four or five. So, first of all, let's show that the field is an element of BN. So let's let B be in the sigma field, but it's an element in the field. So pick, you know, so as it cycles through all these B's in the sigma field, we're only picking the ones that are in the field. So then B intersect AN is in the field, right? Because a field is close to finite unions. So hence mu of B intersect AN is equal to lambda of B of intersect AN, right? Because they're equivalent over the field, and these are sets in the field. Um, and that's for all B, you know, every set in the field. So that means that F is in BN. So um, also note that BN is a subset of the sigma field, sigma of F, right? Because maybe not all the sets B and sigma field create this situation. So BN is a subset of that minimum sigma field generated by the field F. Now... Let's show that BN is close to countable increasing or decreasing sets, right? That's, that's what a monotone class is, actually. Um, but the fact that it also contains the field is another plus that we'll use in a later step. So let's let EN be an element of BN. Now, BN, as a reminder, was this right here. So if EK is an element of BN, that means that, you know, we put EK right here and those two measures equal. But we're going to create this EK in BN such that EK increases to E. And so E is that infinite union of EK. And we want to show that E is in the set BN. That means it's close to increasing unions. So, we can assume that the EK are disjoint. And the reason is, but if they're not, we can replace EK by this equation here, which then this infinite union is their equal, but now they're disjoint. And we do that because of um, that mu and lambda are countably additive, you know, and it, when, especially when they're disjoint sets. So that means mu of EK intersect AN is equal to lambda of EK of AN. And that's because of the, the way that we defined BN. So if EK is an element of it, 
So we'll put EK there, and they're equal. They have to be. So since mu and lambda are countably additive, sometimes called sigma additive, on the sigma field, um, by definition, they're continuous from below. So mu of E intersect A N, which is the limit as K goes to infinity of mu of E K A N. But since mu and lambda are equal on the sigma or the field F for every K, so these both limit to the same value. So the mu of the limit of this mu of E K intersect A N is equal to the limit of K, you know, as K goes to infinity, of lambda of E K intersect A N. But lambda is countably additive, so that we can take this inside, and it's this. So those two values do equal, and since they equal, that means they're a part of Bn. So E is a part of Bn, and that's what we wanted to show. Now, let's do this, a similar argument for decreasing sets. So let's let Ek be, in, be an element of Bn. Then and we it's such that E K are decreasing sets to E. That means the intersection, you know, of these sets are E. And we want to show that E is part of B N, which means that it would be a monotone class. So mu of E K intersect A N is equal to lambda of E K intersect A N, right? Because we said E K was an element of B N. Now note that it's that these are finite. So mu of E K intersect A N, right? This set is smaller than A N, but by definition that it was sigma additive, we know that this is finite. And the same argument for lambda, that this lambda of E K intersect A N is finite. And we actually need that because to be continuous from above, we need one of those sets to be finite in order to use that theorem. So since mu and lambda are countably additive, sometimes called sigma additive, and each of these measures for a given k are finite, mu and lambda are continuous from above. So mu of E intersect A N is actually equal to this limit, but mu and lambda are equal over F, and each for each k, these are equal, so the limits must equal. And, but you can bring that limit in, and, and so that shows that these two measures are equal. And so that means E is an element of Bn. So th thus, Bn is a monotone class. So what have we showed? Um, B, in step three, we know Bn is a monotone class that contains F. So the minimum monotone class of F has to be a subset of Bn, right? Because this is a monotone class that contains F. And this is the minimum monotone class that contains F. Now, by the monotone class theorem, we know that sigma and F uh, is equal to M of F, which is a subset of Bn. But wait, in step one, we said Bn was a subset of the sigma field of F. But you can't be subsets of each other. The only way that's possible is that they're equal. So Bn is equal to the sigma field of uh, generated by F. So now we must show one last step that mu of A is equal to lambda of A. And this is for all sets A in this sigma field of F, you know, generated by F. So let's let A be in this sigma field. Thus, A is an element of Bn, right? Because sigma of F is equal to Bn. So that implies that the measure of A intersect A n is equal to the measure of, oh, and that should be A n the way we defined it. Okay. So that means that these two measures are equal. And then, right, the way we defined a in, or B in, we use the, the notation A in there. Now note that the A ins are increasing sets to omega, right? Because omega is sigma finite. And uh, so that means the measure of A is equal to the measure of A intersect 
the omega, right? Because this is just back to A, so those two are equal. But this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of mu of A intersect A n, right? Because these are increasing sets to omega, so this limits to this same thing. But over the field, these two measures are equal, and they have the same limit. But then lambda, you know, we can bring this limit in, and that's equal to lambda of A intersect omega. But this is just lambda of A. So these two sets do equal over all sets in the sigma field. And that's what we wanted to show, that there's a unique extension. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.